Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and it's full review time on the Gungnir. Um, I have had this knife in my possession now for exactly a week, and I have carried it every single day of that week. Partially because this is a prototype, and I know I'm only supposed to have it for a week before I send it on. It's actually going back to Chris, Renegade EDC, next. Um, but also just because I've been so incredibly excited about it. Now, to be fair, I've also carried a secondary a lot of the time, and there's other knives I've been working on finishing up reviews on, so I haven't necessarily carried, carried this 24 hours a day, every day, but for at least a significant portion of every single day that it's been in my possession, this has been in my pocket. It's been in my pocket in running shorts. It's been in my pocket in dress slacks. It's been in my pocket in regular shorts, in jeans, in like khakis, because I'm Jake from State Farm. Um, it's been in every kind of pocket, basically, that I own, and uh, I've used it for everything that I do with EDC knives, typically. Literally. I wish I had gotten out on a serious hike with this. Um, I did do, like, a very minor one with it, but nothing substantial. The timing of this week just didn't quite work out for that. Um, I got my second dose of the vaccine this week, and it's a whole thing. Um... Some people can be real mad about that or congratulatory. Sorry if that's at all political. Um, I got it mostly to make my wife stop <laughs> talking about it. Anyway, so this is the Gungnir. The designer of this knife is Renegade EDC, a.k.a. Renegade Provisions Co. And he's it's Chris. Chris is a friend of mine. I've been talking to Chris in a group chat that we're both super active in for months now, probably six months plus, I don't know. Um, and we've become friends and I respect the dude in a lot of ways. And one of the things I mentioned in my first impressions that actually that he got a kick out of was I made some kind of comment about how Chris doesn't care about my feelings and he doesn't care about yours. He doesn't care about your neighbor's feelings. He probably doesn't even care that much about like, I don't know, a little old lady's feelings. He just, he's not that kind of guy. He's not a super emotionally driven person. Um, that said, he's not incapable of caring. I consider him a friend and I, we are friendly with each other. And he is a, a guy that I'm super glad to have in my corner and I'm proud to be in his. But he sent this to me and to a number of my friends, some of whom are going to be getting it later. Um, in particular, not just to like have this knife appear on my channel, but he also genuinely wanted my feedback on the knife. And if there's anyone who I know is capable of taking extreme criticism, <laughs> it's Chris. That said, I really don't have much negative that I'm going to say about this knife. As prototype knives go, this thing is super different from me. I honestly didn't expect to like it as much as I do, but it's really, really good. So this is a prototype. There will be uh, at least one change, maybe a couple of small changes for the full production version. Riat is the OEM for this knife. So it's being built by Riat. The retail price that's listed on the Renegade Provisions Co. site right now is... 425 um, for an M390 blade this size with these materials, which we're going to talk about being built by Riat for a small batch, small run from a small guy. Not, he's not a small guy from a small company run by a big guy. Um, I think that's more than fair, especially considering I know that Chris is planning to offer some kind of goodies packaged in with this knife, which will be very cool to see as well tonight. I'm having uh, Chris on my podcast. We're recording the episode. That'll go live on Wednesday of this coming week. So I'm sure more details will be shared in that podcast. It'll probably be quite long because he's a buddy and I want to talk to him anyways, but there's a lot of stuff we need to talk about. In addition to all that, I've got two packages sitting here from Chris. These are things that I ordered. I paid for these, uh, nothing from him. I'm trying to get for free or anything like that. He's a buddy who I want to support, but I have his new mug, and I have one of his shop mats, and I have a handkerchief that we're collaborating on. It's a handkerchief with my design on it. 
my logo actually, which, which Nick, Nick Rogers from Niche Designs, um, created for me. And then a Topo, you'll see it. It's a really cool Hank that fairly soon is going to be launching through him. And it's a collaborative effort between the two of us. So one of the first products that is coming out kind of with my name and branding on it as well. So Bearded Gear Hank that he's making. Um, one of his shop mats that he made by hand out of leather and then his new mug, which is cool as well. So I'm going to unbox those things. I'm going to use this and uh, this is probably going to turn into kind of a long video. So maybe I'll save those things for toward the end because <laughs> I imagine a lot of people are going to want to see this. So let's talk about this knife. We'll do the unboxing toward the end but this is all about Renegade. Apparently in this video, the timing worked out for these things to arrive. And I wanna make sure that I've played with them a little bit before I hop on the podcast with them in just a couple of hours. So, the Gungnir. Let's talk dimensions and specs, obviously loosely. I'm not a huge specs guy. If you want dimensions and stuff, they're probably listed on his site. Um, if not, ask him. <laughs> I'm not gonna like hold up a ruler to this. I'm not gonna put it on a scale. I have seen dimensions and weight, I think, so I'm going to go off of what I remember. I may not be to the T exact on this, but our blade is an M390. I believe total blade length is four and a quarter. Total cutting edge is a solid four inches. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that's the dimensions of the blade. Um, blade stock isn't overly thick, but it's definitely not thin either. It's rocking a hollow grind, which comes down to a very, very thin behind the edge uh, profile. We have a fuller here, which in production is going to become a hole that will go all the way through. This is just a fuller right now. Again, that will become a hole that will go all the way through. It's going to look just like this in terms of its shape, but it will become a hole. It's a titanium bolster lock. This one has been anodized by the first guy that received this, our mutual friend, um, MB Wild, had this before. And he did it in kind of a signature colorway for the group chat that we're in. So he anodized all of the titanium, not just the scales and liners, but also the hardware, as you'll see. He anodized that all to a, a nice bronze color. And then he actually added Rit dye to the black micarta to darken it and it definitely worked. So all of this titanium has been analyzed. Typically the way this knife will ship when it's a production one, it will not come bronze like this. Um, and the micarta won't be quite this dark. So the way a bolster lock works, in essence, it's kind of like a frame lock that they've cut part of the frame out of to put a scale on top of. So it's like a blend between a liner lock and a frame lock. What that means is most of your liner is actually covered, whereas a frame lock, this whole cut out would be exposed, right? So you only get the very top portion of that lock bar that's exposed. I believe on the production one, the size ratio between the bolster and the handles is gonna change slightly and the titanium is gonna grow just a little bit. The scale size will shrink just a hair just to make that bolster appear a little bit larger. Um, that honestly doesn't really matter to me. <laughs> I think the knife looks great as it is, but I don't think I'm going to mind having a little bit more bolster on there either. So that's neither here nor there. Um, internally, there is no internal milling or anything like that. Because it's a bolster lock, frankly, the titanium is pretty thin everywhere that the scales are. So there wouldn't be much material you even could remove. Um, so it's for the size that it is. We'll talk about weight, but it feels relatively light to me for what such a behemoth. <laughs> um, so yeah, black micarta, titanium. This version is wearing the wire deep carry pocket clip. This will be the version that I will be pre-ordering. Um, Pre-orders right now are not open yet, but there is a sign up list to be notified when they become open. Um, the sooner that a bunch of people sign up on that list, the sooner the pre-orders will open, frankly, is the way I understand it. So this is the wire deep carry clip. I love it. We're going to talk about that, but there will also be a milled titanium clip version. I believe they're the same exact price, no matter which you pick. Um, I'm all about function when it comes to pocket clips, and this clip functions incredibly well. So that's why I'll be picking it, but there will be two clip options. Backspacer titanium with a lanyard tube or a lanyard hole kind of integrated back here. And uh, that of course has been analyzed by MB Wild as well. So I believe that's it on materials. Obviously this uh, hardware is all titanium as you can tell as well, because it's all anodized. So titanium, 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 black micarta, 
M390. There is a lock bar insert, which is hardened, and it's a ceramic detent. This knife does run on bearings. So if you're familiar with a Riat built knife in a similar configuration to this, you'll kind of know what to expect when holding this, except, I don't know, I've never handled a Riat built knife this large. <laughs> I'm not usually the type of guy who's into knives this big. This is just bigger than I would typically be willing to carry. I have a couple of pretty large knives, like I have the Spyderco Subvert. I held that up next to this in my first impressions. I'll do that again because it's right here again. But this is a huge knife, right? This knife is kind of comically big. What's crazy is that this knife almost makes the Subvert look small in a couple of ways. But when I think of how big the subvert is. I kind of think it as like comically big. It's funny how big this knife is because it doesn't feel like to me it really adds to its functionality. If anything, it kind of feels like it takes away from it. Specifically, how thick this knife is ruins the functionality to a degree for me. It makes me have to be in a very specific mood to want to carry this knife. The Gungnir is like half as thick as the subvert. Um, and so some big knives just feel big for the sake of making them big. This knife feels big for the sake of making it useful at a set of tasks that even though I don't typically do, it's kind of nice to know that your knife can handle. Like for most of the cutting that I do on a day-to-day -day basis, if I'm kind of around the house doing indoors type of stuff, or even just not going up into the mountains. Most of it's going to be cardboard and opening packages, maybe cutting an apple, stuff like that. For everything that I just said, except for cutting an apple, like cardboard, packaging material, zip ties, stuff like that, really like a two inch blade could do just about any of that. If it's good geometry and works as a cutting tool. But for certain things, blade length does make a difference. Specifically, like I said, cutting an apple Blade length helps a lot, actually. Um, if you've tried using a knife that doesn't make it all the way through the apple to cut through an apple, it could be a pretty frustrating thing. It would be like if you wanted to cut a watermelon and you only had a 3-inch blade, whereas if you had a 12-inch blade, you'd have a much easier time making a nice clean cut through the thing. So blade length can make a big difference. And for guys who are larger, handle size is oftentimes probably one of the most frustrating things about smaller knives. This knife has a handle that I I don't know anybody whose hand this wouldn't fit. <laughs> like, there is so much extra space back here. I can literally, if I squeeze my fingers together, I can just barely get all four of them in this back groove, right? And that's this whole area up here left now untaken. And Back here, I could actually use this reasonably to chop. So this is just a massive knife, but the way it's designed, the way it all comes together, the thinness paired with that, so that even though it's huge, it still fits my hand and feels comfortable. Like all of that comes together to make it seem not comical. Most giant knives that I hold feel kind of comical. It's like, ha ha ha, they overbuilt this thing. You know, like they just wanted to flex on a big knife. like. This doesn't feel like it's playing a game. This feels like a real, legitimate EDC knife for going farther than most people ever will with their EDC knives, but it's done in a way that still makes it comfortable and approachable and realistic to carry and use. And that just seems exceedingly rare. <laughs> the more that I've used this, the more I've thought about the Subvert and the Spider... or sorry, the uh, Zero Tolerance 308. And I don't know, like... I've had a number of big knives, even my Demco 8020. That knife isn't huge, but it's thick and overbuilt. And there's this thick, overbuilt nature to most big knives that I've experienced. And I'm sure there are some others that I just haven't experienced yet that are thin and carryable and usable um, and aren't overbuilt just for the sake of laughs or whatever. But this, oh, this is done so well. So let's talk about my typical kind of criteria by which I judge a knife and just go through point by point the things that I've found about this knife. And uh, before we do that, I'll say honestly, since Chris wants my feedback, I've been looking at this knife, trying to find the ways that I would change it to make it 
not just work better for me, but for me to like things that I would see as faults in it, right? And honestly, the only thing, the one thing, and I've said this all along, and it's already been the plan all along for him, is I would make this fuller a whole so it goes all the way through. We'll talk about on action why I think that's important, but it comes into action. Like, middle finger flicking is my favorite thing to do. I can middle finger flick this knife okay with it being just a fuller, but with it being a whole, it will get better. That I can say with confidence. So that's really the only thing that I would adjust about this. I like the material selection. I am strangely really happy with the size and profile. Um, I love the blade grind. I love the blade shape. I love the pocket clip. I love the way that it carries in pocket. I love so much about it. So I don't find myself looking at this and finding anything to like really critique them on. Like this doesn't feel at all like a knife that I would design and it shouldn't. I didn't design it, but looking at it and trying to find a fault, I just really have struggled to find any. Riat crushes it on build quality. So the way everything is fit and finished, the way the grind is done, the way the action feels, all of that has come together and been excellent. And the design feels unique. It feels unlike something else that I've handled. It doesn't look like many other things that I've seen. And it just, it really works. So honestly, my one bit of like sincere, honest feedback for a guy who's really looking for it is mill that all the way through <laughs> instead of just making it a groove. And that's already the plan. So um, a tip of my hat to that. All right. So yeah, let's jump into Ergo's carry, cutting, action, all that fun stuff. And we'll just kind of go from there. So ergonomically, I've already touched on it. Um, there are a ton of different grips I can get on this knife because there is just so much room. I can choke way back for chopping type stuff. Um, I did chop a little bit at just a piece of wood I had in the backyard because I told Chris I would really go ham with this knife. So I did specifically try choking back here and chopping with it. It did very, very well for a folder in doing that. Um, but ergonomically, honestly, this handle, it just has... A pretty neutral sensation even though you have this kind of hump dividing these two grooves I find even if I land kind of like right on the hump it's not pointy enough to bother me and everything just feels kind of like it's got a swell there rather than a point and I don't know I can put my hand anywhere on this handle I can hold it in a hammer grip I can hold it in a saber grip I can do kind of an aggressive saber grip to get all the way up to this super far forward jimping which I love that he placed it up there instead of back here um, I can yeah I can hold it in a draw cut very comfortable I've cut open a couple of like big bags just to see how it did like this great in a draw cut um, reverse grip super super comfortable the size actually feels for some reason less daunting when I have it in a reverse grip, maybe because I'm wrapping my thumb around it up here and I'm getting kind of centered on the handle, but that feels super comfortable. Um, reverse grip draw cut totally works as well. So it, it's a neutral enough handle that it fits in my hand in any direction. It's also rounded, contoured I should say. So these curves that you see all across the handle really make it way more comfortable in hand you add that to the slimness of it this is a wide handle or tall right whatever dimension you want to call this <laughs> it's big and so this could easily feel way too big for my hand i could easily feel like i'm not actually getting a proper grasp on it if it was thick if this was the thickness of the subvert i can say with confidence i would not like this handle ergonomically because it would feel too big for my medium glove hands that i fill out real well um but <laughs> It, because it's thin, because the profile isn't obscenely oversized for no reason, it feels comfortable in my hands. I like that a lot. Um, yeah, there's no sharp points or corners anywhere. Where the lock bar is cut is even comfortable. I guess if I really feel for it, I can feel that edge there, but it's never poked me or prodded me in any way. It does have this forward choil that you can use to get a nice controlled grip over the blade. With the blade being so big, you can also do some pretty crazy like pinch grip stuff on <laughs> the blade itself and literally just kind of hold the knife by the blade to do work. It's just ergonomically, this knife feels like it wants to go to work 
and it's comfortable when doing it. So I can't really say anything negative about it. Ergos are great. Um, next, let's talk carry. Again, something I've already touched on quite a bit, but this wire deep carry clip for me just makes me so incredibly happy. It could so easily be the case on this knife that it would only come with the titanium milled clip. And I'm confident I would still like this knife with the milled titanium clip, but wire clips are my favorite clips. They are the best in pocket, in my opinion. They're the best in hand, in my opinion. Um, they just, they work the best. I love that it comes all the way to the butt end of the knife. This knife carries super deep. A knife this big shouldn't feel like it disappears in pocket as much as it does. Does it feel like it disappears in the pocket like a Benchmade bug out? No, of course not. Um, maybe disappears in the pocket isn't even the right term to use for this one, but it feels remarkably comfortable and smooth and just pleasant to carry for how big and heavy is it is. I believe this knife weighs in just a hair under seven ounces. That's heavy for a pocket knife for me. For some people that might be what they're used to carrying all the time. It's on the heavy end for me, for sure. But the way that the weight gets spread out across such a big wide profile and without it being so overly wide that it's cumbersome, like it's just flirting with the line of feeling like it's too big in pocket but it doesn't cross it. It's like, I don't know, the fact that it carries deep, everything is round, everything is smooth, everything is thin, and the flipper tab doesn't stick out a crazy amount. Like, it's definitely wide, but it's not, I don't know. For some reason, I felt knives that are probably not even as wide as this is this way in pocket that just felt way bigger. And it's gotta be the thinness. Like, it's just such a thin knife for how large it is overall. And the fact that it carries deep with a clip that's so comfortable, it all works incredibly well for me. So carry is awesome. I really, really like carrying it. Um, let's talk action next. I'm gonna do a moment of ASMR again because the sounds that this knife makes are out of this world good. It sounds like, pull, like drawing a, sh a sword from a scabbard, like a cutlass out of a metal scabbard, like swing, you know, like, I don't own, nor can I recall ever owning any other knives that make sounds like this one does. Listen to this. It has this sing when it deploys, where you just get, like, it rings like a bell. It's remarkably good. And of course, super drop shutty because it's a Riat knife on bearings and it has this much blade on it. So it's an absolute guillotine on closure. Sounds amazing, feels amazing. Um, the flipper tab is fantastic. It's positioned really well. The jimping that's on it isn't aggressive enough to bother me. It's just enough to get a good grip. Your finger lands very comfortably on the back of the knife. It, everything about it is fun to play with and reliable. That's great. Uh, middle finger flicking for now with the fuller is even pretty good, I'll say. It's not amazing, but it's pretty good. Once that's a hole, it's going to be even better. So the fact that I'll be able to middle finger flick this for days will probably make me even care less about this flipper and the flipper right now is amazing. So that's going to be good. Um, yeah, action is just a win. Absolute win. That leaves us with cutting. So this blade is a beast and you can see it's kind of a worn cliff sheep's footy type of thing going on here. We do have some constant belly all the way through, but it's very gradual. It's not like abrupt curve. It's, it's lightly curved. Um, like I said, it's a hollow grind. With that hollow, it's taken really thin down behind the edge and it stays thin before gradually getting thick because it's a tall hollow. I like that a lot. I have found that in slicing through things like cardboard, which is a pretty good indicator of how a knife actually slices through, continuously through material, it glides like a knife this big wouldn't be expected to. Cuts really well through stuff like that. Um, the tip isn't overly dainty. It wouldn't be a Renegade EDC knife if it had a, anything dainty about it. Um, but yeah, this knife feels more like it's prone to slicing, obviously with this blade shape, than it does to stabbing or puncturing. But it's incredible at slicing and at chopping and... Uh, in the little bit of like food prep I've done with it, 
cutting an apple. I also cut like some broccoli the other night and an onion, I think. So broccoli, an onion, and some carrots. Um, it did really well for all of those because the profile just kind of works to get down on a cutting board fairly well. And it's thin and slicey and it works great. Um, yeah, this uh, honestly... Knowing Chris, I'm surprised that this knife is as slicey as it is because he's hard on his knives. But thin and slicey can still be great for hard use. It's just there, there's a balance there, right? And I feel like so many overbuilt hard use knives just go super obtuse, thick behind the edge, like just because that feels more hard use. Like not that it actually performs better in it. There's a place for thick geometry, but on an EDC knife, thick geometry just doesn't make that much sense to me. And so many overbuilt knives are like, we're overbuilt, we're going thick. And the fact that it's a relatively thin blade stock, it's not overly thick at all. This is probably as thick or maybe even slightly thinner than like a PM2. Um, and it holds enough of that strength through this big flat up here. You've got a swedge that I think looks really good, but then you get this crazy hollow grind that's just done incredibly well. It just, it's balanced. It works great. And uh, you've obviously got so much edge that it makes a lot of cutting tasks feel easier. I don't know if that's just a subliminal, like a just in my head kind of thing, but like if I'm cutting through cardboard and I've got this or a pair of three, even if they're both like relatively slicey knives this just feels easier at doing jobs with because it feels like you've got more knife in your hand i don't know whether it's actually better at slicing than a pair of three i haven't compared them side by side but i don't know maybe it's the the really full firm grip i feel like i get on it maybe it's the blade length maybe it's i don't know it just feels super capable so cutting is great um yeah so all of that being said Every category by which I kind of arbitrarily, in my opinion, judge knives, this thing passes with flying colors. This is a knife that, if I wasn't friends with Chris, I probably wouldn't try based on the size of it alone. I'd be like, yeah, that looks nice, but at four and a quarter on the blade length, being almost seven ounces, that's out for me. Like, this is not a knife that I would find myself shopping for right what's been impressive to me is that as i've tried to peel away <laughs> any like lens of that relationship as i've been looking at this knife i i without knowing him i wouldn't have experienced it because i wouldn't have taken the chance on it right but now that I've experienced it, oh man, this is a knife I have to have. Like, friendship with him aside, I need a big knife like this. Because I have some big knives, but all of them feel like they make concessions for being big. For the ways that I use a knife. Like, I expect a primary folder that goes in my front right pocket to be able to cut a minimum requirement of things. And all of my big knives will do that. They will all cut. They're all cutting implements that do fine. But none of them carry like this one does. None of them feel like refined like this one does, I guess. I don't like this has a certain quality to it that I didn't know could happen in big knives. Where it still feels approachable, still feels usable, still feels realistic. Like, this isn't trying to play some game. It's just being a really good knife that's well done and looks good, is made in fantastic materials, and it functions. And the biggest thing is really how it carries for me. I said in my first impressions, I shared how the first day that I carried this, I carried it in the waistband of some running shorts because I was doing a crazy amount of cardio that day. And I wore it all day in the waistband of running shorts and ran with it there and it did fantastic like that's not something i could say about my subvert or my ad20 or my zt308 like none of those knives would possibly not irritate me <laughs> through that process so this just it achieves something that i didn't know could be done 
with a knife this size for me. Um, so yeah, I'm stoked that I gave it a shot. Obviously, that happened because I'm friends with Chris. But uh, yeah, thank goodness for that friendship because now I'm going to, when I get one of these for myself, I'm going to have, like to me, an ultimate big knife in my collection. Most of my big knives I'm, I'm only willing to carry if I'm in like a big knife mood because they suck at being in pocket for my preferences. This doesn't. So this is a big knife I can own and I can carry whenever in whatever clothing that I'm in to wherever I'm going. I could carry this on a road trip for 14 hours straight in the car and it would be just as comfortable as a PM2 in my pocket. Like, I wouldn't put one of my other giant knives in my pocket to sit in the car for that long. It would irritate me. <laughs> That's just, I make decisions like that all the time because I have so many knives to pick from. And this finds itself in a realm of its own. So I guess I'm going to kind of leave it at that. I'm going to open these other packages from Chris and there's going to be the podcast with Chris. Um, let me say right now as well, I will link down below to Renegade EDC and to Renegade Provisions Co. Um, if you are interested in these, the thing to do right now is to sign up for the newsletter. So do that. And after signing up for the newsletter, basically what that means is when the pre-order goes live, you'll be one of the first people to know about it, and you can sign up to pre-order one of these. Um, yeah, I highly encourage people to do so. Almost especially <laughs> if, like me, you thought the size of this was too big and it kind of like it, it's bigger than you'll carry or you'll use and i've had a number of comments in my first couple of videos about this knife along those lines already ah, if it was smaller i'd buy it that's too big for me um i responded to some of those with that's what she said because it's hilarious but this knife was also too big for me and then i found out it wasn't like <laughs> i am totally cool with the size of this knife and I love it. I love that it's this big because it does it really well. And I haven't experienced any other big knives that handle their own size so well. <laughs> um, all right. So that'll all be linked down below. Watch out for the podcast that's coming up. Now let's unbox these things. I'm going to start with the mug just because it's what's right here. Um, this is like a camp mug. So it's metal of some sort. And... Uh, I don't, I'm not like a mug guy. I don't know a ton about it, but I figured it would be a cool like pack mug while I'm backpacking or camping or whatever. And it's from him and he's a buddy. So I ordered one. Uh, let's see. All right. A lot of bubble wrap, which is nice. I save all of that because I'm always sending stuff. And there's a bunch of tape on here. Yeah, so if you're not familiar with Chris's line of products, from Renegade EDC and now Renegade Provisions Co. The entire time I've known him, he's been making Hanks. And he's been doing really well at it. I have a number of his Hanks. Let's see. Got some of them oh, right here. My most carried Hank, period, is this one. This is a Renegade EDC Hank. And it's kind of like this tweed, like polyester-ish material. And then this side is microfiber freaking adore this Hank. I use it a lot. I've washed it a few times. Um, this is a collaboration Hank that he did with MB Wild, the buddy who had the Gungnir before me. So this is artwork for MB Wild, and uh, it's a Renegade EDC Hank rocking it. I am not sure if these have already dropped. I think they're actually coming soon. So, I don't know. Message Chris about that. Um, but yeah, so I've, I've also got a Star Wars themed Hank of his in my fanny pack that I keep there all the time. I've, I've had now three of his Hanks, and I've had a bunch of Hanks from other makers, and I'm not saying that those are bad in any way, I've liked a lot of them, but his are the Hanks that I actually choose to carry and use. I just love them in application. All right, this is really bubble wrapped in here. Now it's wrapped in some paper. Oh, and his Renegade Provisions Co. sticker on top. Yeah, so I think these are just stainless steel, I would imagine. But that's his new Renegade Provisions Co. logo. You can see the Gungnir is actually at the top there, on top of the skull's head. 
Um, just a really sweet mug that should actually be quite handy. I think that's just more bubble wrap. Apparently, Chris is just donating bubble wrap to the channel packaging supplies at the moment. <laughs> um, yeah, this is really nice. So, just a mug. I think I paid, I think these were 25 bucks, something like that, right in that ballpark. Um, pretty cool. And now this one, I'm even more excited about because it is my new shop mat, which he made um, for me. Basically what had happened was, he's been making these. I already have like a desktop work mat, right? I've got the one that I got from B.Y. Weiss Leather. And I love that shop mat. It's done great for me. I really don't want to cut anything important in here. It's a little bit scary. Um, yeah, so I have a, a desktop work mat that I really quite like. And I've been using it for a while, it's been great. But then I got that before Chris started making these. And uh, since then, I haven't ordered one because I just already have one. It seemed a little frivolous. But then he sent me a video um, showing one that he had already laser printed, just like a test laser print, right, with my logo. Um, and he was like, what do you think? And I was like, tell me how much it is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that. Um, so I, I bought it because I had to have it. It's like, how could I not? It's customized, lasered with my logo, and he does really, really great leather work. I already have his strop too, which is some of his early leather work. Um, yeah, so let's get it out of here. I'm trying to do this without messing up any of the internal stuff. All right, so got a little thank you card from him. That's for me, not for you. And then in here is my collaboration Hank with him let's do that last and here is my shop mat now another thing about Chris is he crushes it on packaging absolutely like just makes a couple extra little steps that really take it up a notch on the experience when you get one of his products and this bubble wrap everywhere all right so super bubble wrapped and then wrapped in this like cardboard sheeting to keep it safe and then the mat itself the leather is wrapped in this paper again so we've got strings all over it let's cut that Does his like wax seal too with his logo. Just crazy amounts of little details. And it's wrapped up in here. It's like unwrapping a Christmas gift. Oh, sick. All right. Yes. First of all, this is thick and nice. That's what she said. Um, so the back is just this really, I, I'm not a leather snob. I don't know <laughs> what what type of leather this is. He can talk about it on the podcast, um, but really nice brown leather. And then on this side, we have my logo. Look at that, lasered on. And then in the kind of like disassembly section where you can put hardware and stuff, it's a topo lasered on. So like topographical map. And this thing is dope. I think this is his larger size. I'm pretty sure he does two sizes. I think this is his large or XL one. I don't know. But it's got my logo down on this corner. And then it's got topographical pattern there in the disassembly section. All of this stitching is super nice. The leather is crazy nice. Yeah, this is sweet. So this is a, a welcome addition. You're going to definitely be seeing some assemblies and disassemblies and stuff on there. All right, let's do the Hank. So this is a Hank that's going to be available soon. This is a prototype print, so the scale is a little bit off, like the threading or the stitching goes into the logo on this one. So bear in mind that on the production ones that are coming very soon, they're not gonna do that. Um, the logo, my logo, will be scaled down just a little bit to fit within the stitching. But again, we've got a wax seal. It's not actually sealing anything on this, but it's still a cool touch. And then 
bust into here. I guess I probably could have done that without tearing it, but it has a spot like you're supposed to tear it. Let's get in here. All right. A couple of Renegade Provisions Co. stickers. Big one and a little one right off the bat. That's also sweet. And, oh, dude. All right. So here is the Hank. You can see it's got my logo. This is kind of my mountain beard hat <laughs> logo that, again, Nick Rogers from Niche Designs mocked up for me and, and made a reality, which is really, really cool of him. Um, on Renegade EDC Hanks, you can see you get these little leather tags, which I think is a super nice touch. And then on the back, you get microfiber. And uh, yeah, so around the logo, if you can see, it'll be easier to see when this is scaled down a little bit, but it's actually that topo pattern again, which is really, really cool on a nice kind of like forest green background. And yeah, so this is a legit bearded gear, Hank. How freaking dope is that? Um, so these are going to be available. They're, all of the sales are going to be handled through his site and channel and all that. Um, but soon... I'll talk to him on the podcast tonight about timelines. So I, I don't know exactly when they're going to drop and all of that, but we're planning to make quite a few of them available. And uh, his Hanks, especially for the quality, are incredibly well-priced. Um, but even just compared to what a lot of Hank makers charge, they're super fair and uh, really, really cool. So I'm stoked to see that this has my logo. This is me and a Hank. <laughs> That's really, really rad. And, uh, yeah, the printing is really nice. Everything about it came out great. So, again, it'll be scaled a little bit differently, but this is the Hank that's coming. And, uh, yeah, this has been a long review because we went through so much and then unboxed stuff here. But, uh, yeah, thank you all for checking it out. Again, this is the Gungnir. And uh, now I've got a whole suite of Renegade Provisions Co. stuff to go with it from the mug to the shop mat, to now my Hank, and uh, I already had a number of things from him, the strop, and some more Hanks, and I'm wearing his beard balm today, he makes beard balm, I don't know if you knew that, he raises bees, guy's an animal, so watch out for the podcast that's coming up, um, that'll be, as of when this goes live, that'll be very shortly after, I assume this will go live before then, I'll make sure it does, and uh, yeah, Sign up for notifications or a heads up about the pre-order on these through his site. Highly recommend doing that. I am so excited to order that knife and to have one of my own because it's just, it's its own thing. It, it, it feels like it kind of created a new category for me, which is really, really exciting. So anyway, thanks guys. I appreciate it. Again, all the links will be down below for Renegade EDC and Renegade Provisions Co. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.